In the first lecture of this series on Utah's architectural history, we discussed the architecture of the early Puebloans who lived in the southern region of what is today Utah. In this lecture, we will discuss the building traditions of other native peoples who, like the ancestral Puebloans, have inhabited sections of Utah and parts of the Intermountain region for centuries. By no means does this map provide a comprehensive representation of all of Utah's native peoples, but the map does show where historically, at least, some of the region's native tribes have lived in relation to Utah's contemporary boundaries. Of course, it goes without saying that the tribes featured on this map long predate the modern state of Utah, and therefore discussions of particularly Utah tribes would be anachronistic. Anthropologists argue that native groups began to populate the Intermountain region between 1 and 2,000 years ago. In contrast with the ancestral Puebloans who farmed, many of these other native groups developed their cultures around hunting and gathering practices. Consequently, these groups did not tend to build permanent structures, but they did have remarkable architectural traditions of their own that were well suited to their nomadic lifestyles. It is important to stress that many of these native structural traditions had a very limited impact on the landscape. And this stands in great contrast to most of what we build today, which is of course typically permanent and typically has a tremendous impact on the landscape and the larger environment. I would first like to highlight the building traditions of the Southern Paiutes, who, as their name suggests, inhabited Utah's Southern deserts. Southern Paiutes did not typically live in tribes. Oftentimes their groups were made up of small family units, 10 to 50 people strong that would mingled periodically with other Paiute family groups. Southern Paiute shelter consisted of small wickiups made of brush supported by limbs. This form of housing offered several obvious advantages. Wickiups were relatively easy to build and they offered ventilation. Constructed in pods, wickiups also offered some protection from predators. Now I just said that wickiups are relatively easy to build. On a personal note, I should note that I do not find them easy to build. I have tried to build wikiups on several occasions, and in the process, I have learned how difficult, really difficult it is, to keep something standing without the benefit of nails or tape, glue, or any of the other sorts of adhesives that we have available to us in the 21st century. The Utes utilized a variety of housing options that were aligned with their nomadic lifestyle, some of which are pictured here. Like the Paiutes, the Utes built wickiups, but they also constructed leaner teepees, which are essentially teepees set up against trees or other forms of fixed posts. Utes, of course, also utilized the traditional teepee, and they have, were not, of course, unique among Utah tribes in doing so. The Shoshone, the related Bannock, and other tribes also use the teepee as a primary form of shelter. The major benefit, of course, the teepee offers is that it can be easily taken down, moved, and rebuilt on a regular basis. In North America, amongst the Intermountain Region tribes, the Plain tribes, when groups arrived at a new location, Oftentimes, it was the women of the tribe who would set up the teepee, and these same women would likewise dismantle the teepee when it came time to move to another location. In the summer, the teepee's covering would be raised to allow for a large gap in the bottom, which enabled cool air to flow through the teepee and keep the inside of the teepee ventilated. In the winter, additional coverings and insulation, such as grass and animal hides, were used to keep the teepee's interior warm. In the center of the teepee, a fire could be built to provide heat and cooking. And of course, the hole at the top of the teepee let the unwanted smoke out. It is important when talking about Native American teepees to acknowledge the role that the horse played in teepee use and development. Native Americans, of course, did not always have access to horses. Only after the Spanish came to North America did the horse become an animal accessible to Native Americans. When you see teepees today, they of course are mostly made of canvas, but before Anglo-American Western settlement took place, canvas and other types of industrially produced cloth was not available. 
Teepees, before this time, were made of hide. And the horse allowed herding animals to be hunted in mass, which then in turn allowed Native Americans to easily gather the amount of hide necessary to make these large teepees. It's important to note as well that horses also facilitated the transport of teepees from place to place. Utah's native populations today now inhabit modern houses. That may be seen as an obvious point, but I raise this point because many Native American representatives tell me that they are regularly asked by people if they continue to live in teepees as their primary form of shelter. They now live in modern houses, but wikieps, teepees, and other forms of traditional housing are of course still important to community identity, to tribal identity, and continue to play a central role in many of the ceremonies sponsored by Utah's native tribes through the present day. We thank you for tuning in to this lecture we also thank you for the support you give Preservation Utah, and we like to acknowledge in particular our donors. It's thanks to our donors, our members, that we are able to offer this type of programming, other forms of programming, and to advocate for Utah's historic built environment. We thank you for your support.